Okay, so to kick off our theme development, obviously we have the free HTML template that was downloaded from the source. In this is the distribution folder and then the source folder. So the way it works is SAS and all of your actual development stuff is developed and compiled from this folder to this folder using Gulp. There are a few things we need to do to get started in terms of getting it to play nicely with WordPress. And the first obviously is to get WordPress installed in the right directory. Um, for th this part, I'm going to just install it in a directory I have in my, in my local host, which is a sites folder, which all my sites live. Um, I have an alias set up on my command line to go to it. You can set one up as well. It's pretty easy to do if you just Google that. Maybe I'll do another video to show you how to do it. Anyway, I created an alias to this actual folder I'm showing you on the left. So it's, for me, it's, um, what is it? HTML to WP, there we go. So we're inside that. And to install WordPress, you can do it straight from the web interface, or I like to do the method using the WP CLI, which is the new command line interface for it. Here you can execute, you know, all these parameters, tasks, stuff like that, and it's pretty useful. I need to dive deeper in this and just start actually building themes this way because I'd like to get into the REST uh, WordPress solution. That's something for another time though. So getting started, the first command I'll run is WP core download. And what it should do is go fetch the latest version of WordPress and install it in this directory. Hopefully we see that happen right now. There we go. Cool. So according to this, it's successfully downloaded. You'll see all these files on the left here um, have been updated. And to actually get it to work, we need to configure WordPress settings and actually add a database because that's where data is saved on a WordPress install. Why don't we open this file in Sublime? And I use MAMP locally. I have it running. You can use any other service if you're on Windows. I think there's XAMPP, something like that. So we need to actually create a database. So you actually need to go into the interface here, simply create a new database for this. Let's do HTML to WP. I'd recommend a different name than that just for a real site, but this is just a kind of walkthrough for you guys. Okay, so with that installed, we can actually add the database name here. We wrote HTML to WP, username for MAMP, is root bump up the size and same for the password and just for my sanity's sake i always do this copy and paste this url into your browser and it will turn these key values just enter those and paste them in for security it's a good practice okay so that's essentially getting WordPress going. We need to actually run the install. And to do that, you need to visit the actual uh, path, which in this case, my folder is WC, which is WebCrunch2, and then HTML to WP, if that makes sense. And you should get this dialog where you can install WordPress. Let's just call this HTML to Word WP. Yeah, webcrunch.com. Why not? Okay, so we'll install WordPress this way. And it should work. So you just log in and you should be greeted with the basic first time interface when you do install WordPress. And we already have an update. That's ridiculous, but okay. The next thing I like to do for my own sake, I mean, WordPress comes with these themes bundled. That's neat, but 
I can't really stand them, to be honest. It's it's cool to see what new features are available in terms of the code, but I I just don't piggyback on those typically. Some people do child themes and go that route. Um, I'm more of the, um, I don't know, customized approach. In another video, I talked about using how I install WordPress locally and get my workflow set up. Um, I like to make use of underscores which is a starter theme that is actually made by the folks at WordPress. And it's at underscores.me. And you can create, it's basically a, 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 I don't know what to call it, a wizard that creates a theme based on your naming conventions. So for this name, I'll do HTML to WordPress, theme slug HTML to WP, me is the author. I'll just do my actual agency, a couple of creatives. Go check us out. And a description can be whatever, it's just a, a theme t t based on a tutorial from HTML to WordPress. Yay. Generate, you should get a zip file. In that file will be our theme to start with. So I'm gonna copy and paste that into my directory over here. It needs to be inside WP content, themes, and the theme folder. You'll see the other themes that WordPress installed by default there. And next, we actually need to activate that theme in our admin. So I'm assuming it's refreshed, themes, and under appearance. You'll see ours here. We don't have a screenshot yet. I don't know that I'll add one, but if for good practice, you might. It's pretty easy to do. And essentially, there's our starter theme. So we're set to go. Um, there are some optimizations I'll of course make to the theme itself. I think we're gonna try to make use of that distribution folder in our root directory. So I'm going to gear it that way and copy these over. Into, let's, what are they calling it here? They're just putting in the root too. So we'll do that. Um, replace that. Get rid of their version of SAS. Believe. Am I missing that? Yeah, that's their version. The starter themes version, I should say. And actually, I'm going to. I don't know that we'll plan to customize styles. If you plan to customize styles, you might want to do this a bit differently. Um, I'm going to just basically bring the style sheet into the root of the theme and that's going to override uh, the default once we get it renamed here. Um, the only thing we need to do is make sure this comment is in place on this file. I'm going to keep, keep that comment there and add this one. I don't know that he used normalize. Cool. So what I'm gonna do at this point is delete the, this style. It's That's the big difference here is there's one called style.css and the other is styles, which is the one that came in the folder you probably downloaded. We're going to rename that to style and WordPress should ref reflect those styles. Once you do that, I'm going to get rid of the CSS directory and I think we should be good. If we were to go to the dist folder, this is our theme at its current state, the HTML. Translating this to WordPress isn't all that difficult. The The big thing is to think of the user. So you want to actually think forward in terms of what will they want to be able to update? What should they be able to update? 
and do they need to update something like uh, for instance i don't know i don't know like these these images of the the credit cards like I, I don't know that the user needs to be able to change that you might offer that if you're building say a commercial theme but for a client or for yourself or someone you know realistically they don't need to update anything and everything and that's in my mind a perk it's less code to you know maintain less hiccups along the way they can only do certain things and it's kind of controlled so I think that'll in this first video, I want to kind of keep these short and sweet, but get off, get us off the ground running. So at this point, we have no content. It's based, our styles are imported, but it's based around, you know, that, that theme I just showed you. So the next step is to start moving content around, making WordPress work with our actual style, um, our actual content. I mean, like, subscribe. If you like this, keep following along. There'll be more to come. I'll see you in the next one.